All right, let's talk about the Atlanta Falcons. Let's talk about Arthur Smith. Arthur Smith has sort of all of a sudden gotten a ton of criticism here by Atlanta Falcons fans and fans of other teams as well. And you know what? Some of the criticism I really do agree with. I think that there is an inherent problem with how Arthur Smith runs his offense. Like, for example, let's just start off with this one, which is a a simple play. So it's going to be a running play. And the main thing you see, what I put on the screen, is going to be Kyle Pitt's block on this play. Kyle Pitts is going out to block Byron Murphy Jr., a corner. So, you know, on paper, this is actually a mismatch for Atlanta, a tight end blocking a corner that should be advantage Atlanta. However, watch Murphy really just sprints through the air. He's able to go by so quick that Pitts wasn't able to get over and make the block. So, okay, good job by Murphy Jr. You're in a situation here where this is actually Tyler Algier, not uh, B. John Robinson. You know, what are the criticisms of Arthur Smith, right? not using his star players enough. On this play, you're going to see that uh, Algier ends up getting tackled, and uh, you know that's the end of the play. You lose four yards. Why am I bringing all of this up? Well, for one, you know, if Bijan was there, would he have been able to make that move and, you know, avoided the tackle? I don't know. That seemed pretty kind of dead in the water to begin with, which is why a lot of people are against drafting halfbacks so high in the draft to begin with because of that very logic. If, you know, if you don't block in front of them, not a lot of halfback can do, whether it's B. John Robinson or Barry Sanders. There's only so much you can do, right? But the main reason I'm showing this play is a different reason. So this was a first down and 10. Okay, you want to run the ball a lot. All it takes is one thing to go wrong to completely throw you off of your football game. Now you're in a second and 14, you kind of can't run the ball at this point, and you're stuck in obvious passing situations. The whole way you run your offense is, are we passing or are we throwing? You don't know. Well, if in this situation, you've now screwed it up. So it really means, you not that you have to be perfect, but you almost can't take these losses of plays. And honestly, even stuff like this, where it's going to be a, you know, a second down and 10, I really don't love running the ball here. I don't, because it's guaranteeing almost that you're going to have to you know, put the ball in your quarterback's hands to try and get the first down. Uh, one of the things I talk about uh, often is that, yes, when you don't have a good quarterback, in some ways, logically, it makes sense to get the ball out of their hands. But Sometimes the flip side is true. Sometimes you need to give them more chances. This play, uh, it's going to be a running play to the top of the screen. You see I've circled the closest unblocked player for Minnesota. Watch as Heineke is going to give the ball to Bijan Robinson this time. And at this point, okay, what can he do? He has a man to miss. Is he going to, you know, a man to make miss? What is he going to be able to accomplish here? Well, as you see, he's, you know, going to get like, you know, three or four yards on that play. That's not a bad play by B. John Robinson. He did what he could do on that play. But it's just the thing of realistically, these kind of things, you know, running on third and uh, 10 or excuse me, second and 10 like this to set up a you know, easier third down. It works a lot better with when you have Derrick Henry, which is when Arthur Smith had his most success, right? Building an offense around Derrick Henry makes sense because Derrick Henry, one guy to miss, seemingly makes him miss a lot. B. John Robinson still makes the one guy miss a good chunk. Like, he's still really good as a running back, obviously, but he's not a, you know, the best running back in the past 10 years like Derrick Henry, you know, was. Maybe B. John can get there. I don't know. He's still young. But for now, that's how we view it. And then, like, going over to a play like this, like, there's no denying the quarterback thing is an issue. The quarterback thing is absolutely an issue. I mean, you know, you had to make a quarterback change midway through the season, despite the fact that you had a winning record. Clearly, the quarterback issue uh, is a real thing. This play, it's going to be a third down and seven. They're trying to get the ball to Kyle Pitts. Because, again, let's talk about the Kyle Pitts and the Drake London thing. Those guys not getting a ton of touches, you know, despite the fact that everyone kind of is confused. Hey, you spent all these high draft picks on skill position players, Drake London, B. John Robinson, uh, you know, Kyle Pitts. Why aren't you feeding them more? Well, this play, it's a third and seven. You see, you know, the route I've circled in white, the end of the route. Uh, that is where Pitts is going to eventually go. There's a clear out route, so hopefully it can get open. Well, you're going to see that uh, Heineke takes a snap. He's going to fire in that direction, and there is a window. It's not wide open, but there's a window to make this throw. It's, again, a bit of a tough throw. you got to get over to players who are covering over the middle of the field, all of that stuff. However, still, Heineke overthrows this one. Could have been intercepted, honestly. Um, That's a bad play. There's no denying that's a bad play. And, again, it is tough to win when you don't have the quarterback. So I think that, to some degree, some of the issues with Arthur Smith, uh, you know, are because they haven't gotten the quarterback thing figured out. Maybe part of that is due to Arthur Smith. I don't know exactly how much of a hand he has in the personnel, but, you know, 
famously, Atlanta did not offer uh, Lamar Jackson a contract offer when they could have. Atlanta has kind of neglected the quarterback position, going with kind of, you know, Heineke, who I like enough. Like, I don't think he's a bad quarterback, but, you know, he's not a great quarterback either. Like, he's kind of been a career backup for a reason. Uh, Desmond Ritter looks like career backup, feels like what we expect out of him. You know, he was a third-round pick for a reason, right? So on one hand, you can use the excuse of, oh, well, if quarterback misses the throw, what are we supposed to do? Well, maybe don't get in so many third and sevens. Like maybe get into positions where you can, you know, have an opportunity on second and seven to throw the football down the field, right? You don't want every single time a quarterback is throwing the football to be third and seven. That, that's really what I mean. Again, you can say, well, I mean, listen, what are we supposed to do, right? We don't have a great quarterback situation at this point. So, like, we don't want to, you know, he'll turn the ball over if we just let him throw a bunch. And I'm certainly not suggesting that they should be a pass-first team or anything like that. Running the ball more than the average team does make sense just given the construct of their current roster. But that's my point is they built this roster to fit the Arthur Smith system, right? That's what they went out and did. Uh, and to me, I think it's a flawed way to, you know, build a roster more so than a way to coach this specific personnel. Because like going over here, I'm sure that what Arthur Smith defenders would love to bring up, and it is worth bringing up, the scheme can absolutely set up uh, certain guys to get open and pick up some big yards. Like this one, it's a play action. Uh, you're going to see Heineke roll out towards the bottom of the screen. And you have, you know, uh, a player who's going to be going underneath right here. That player is Mac Hollins. So notably not a, you know, superstar uh, receiver here. But Mac Hollins, okay, let's see what happens. So uh, Heineke takes a snap, runs the play action, and you see Hollins is getting ready to be open underneath. Like, there is, you know, not a ton of separation, but there's some, and the player covering him is a linebacker, so this might as well be a ton of separation. As you see, Heineke is going to flip the ball to Mac Hollins, and they pick up a good chunk play right there. And when the Arthur Smith scheme is working, this is what it can do. You can scheme guys open, you can make these things happen, you can get John Smith 100 yards like he had in this game, and... In the occasional situation where you have a third and seven, that's when you look towards Kyle Pitts and when you look towards Drake London. Kind of similar to what uh, he did in Tennessee, right? I mean, A.J. Brown was not the player with Tennessee that he is now. Even with, you know, he had some injury uh, issues uh, in Tennessee. But still, I mean, he, you know, yards per game wise, he's still much better in Philadelphia than he was in Tennessee. Two out of those three years was when Arthur Smith was there. The third year, Arthur Smith's scheme was still there. A.J. Brown, you know, he made a lot of good things happen on specific third downs uh, and was still able to be an effective part of the scheme with the over-the-middle routes as well. But definitely, we've seen, you know, he didn't reach his full potential until he left. And we're seeing a situation now where, like, listen, I don't care about fantasy football. I don't even play fantasy football except for the one league I've been in for, you know, 10 years and I always finish last in. 100%, you can't be looking at the statistics. Uh, you know, hey, uh, over, you know, Kyle Pitts and Drake London don't get a ton of stats. That's not the issue. Uh, you know, B. John Robinson getting less carries than Tyler Algier. That's not the issue. The issue is the offense as a whole just hasn't been good enough. And part of that is because you don't have a great quarterback. But again, that's why you go out and you put resources into getting the good quarterback so you don't have to do all this weird stuff. You can just have a good quarterback and throw the ball up to Kyle Pitts and uh, Drake London. The Arthur Smith scheme is not a disaster. It's not terrible, and it can win you a lot of games. It got the Titans to a conference championship with Ryan Tannehill, a good but not elite quarterback, uh, you know, to the conference championship. Like, that's certainly notable. Like, that is worth bringing up. And I, I do think that if it was a worse play caller running the you know, Falcons offense right now, I think that they're, they're probably worse than four and five. I do. But to me, the issue is less about what they're doing with their personnel and more about how they pretty much intentionally went into the season with this mindset. And while it's not been a total disaster, why are you aiming to not be a disaster? You should be aiming to be good. That's how I view it. But yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.